In this video clip, we will learn how to enter cash receipts into the Accounts Receivable module. Go to the Accounts Receivable module. Double-click on Accounts Receivable Transaction. Double-click on Accounts Receivable Batch List. Here, you will see all of the cash receipt batches that have been posted. Click the New button because we want to create a new batch. We are now going to title the batch. We're going to call it October 4th because that's when we took the actual deposit to the bank. Cash receipt. Batch number one because this is our first batch for the month of October. Hit tab. This is your session date. Do not change this date. This is your bank code and the bank account that you wish to affect. If you need to change to a different bank for some reason, you can click the looking glass and find that account here. But we're going to stay with our main checking account that's set up as the default. The deposit number, we're going to let the system assign a number, so we're going to click New. And the deposit date, we're going to set it to October 4th, because that's when we took the deposit to the bank. And our first entry um, here, we're going to title it with a reference number of DR, which stands for cash receipt, 13, the fiscal period, and the next consecutive uh, receipt number, 2040. The first item in our deposit is an actual receipt for an accounts receivable invoice. So we're going to leave it set as re at receipt. The receipt date is going to be October 4th, because that's when we uh, got it. And the posting date is going to be today's date, 10-11. And the year period that we want affected is October. Next, we need to find the customer number, because I don't know it. So we're going to click the looking glass. And we're going to type in Ithaca because it's Ithaca Children's Garden. And here's the uh, customer number garden. We can double click on that. That will populate the name of the payor. And then in the reference section, we are going to uh, write invoice number 19240 because that's what they're paying. The account set, we are going to uh, switch it to receivable. Going to select it. The payment code, they paid by check. If they paid by cash, you can change it, or if they paid by credit card, but they paid by check, so we're going to select that. The check or receipt number is 0373. Hit the tab button. The amount we received for this um, was 12452.90. Hit the tab button. You'll notice that we haven't applied, we have unapplied money here of the same. Next, we're going to go and click the double arrows. And this brings up all the invoices in the system for this particular customer. And we notice that they want to pay the most recent invoice. And there's the invoice number. There's the dollar amount. So we want to apply it to this last invoice. So change the no to yes by double clicking on it. And then you'll notice that when you click add, it'll send you to the next entry. If you click back uh, once it's updated, you go back to the first entry and you'll notice that this unapplied amount went away because you completely applied the full amount of the check to the actual invoice. Next, we're going to go to create entry number two and we are going to put in the same reference number, cash receipt 13, next consecutive number is 2040 uh, for this entire batch. 
Now what's different here is we have an individual making a payment and it's not something that we bill for. So we'll choose miscellaneous receipts. There will be no customer number because we did not bill for it. So we're going to bypass this field. We're going to go over to payer. This uh, item was paid by S rep and we can look at the documentation and see what they were paying for and it looks like a participation fee And the reference number here is going to be, oh, I'm mistaken. I apologize. This is the description. And if you make a mistake, you can use Excel uh, concepts to highlight. <laughs> we'll try this again. Right click, copy, and paste in the reference. Okay. And then up here is just going to be the payer's name. And they paid by check. And the check number was 3790. The document number is going to be new. And the receipt amount is going to be $10. We're going to tap through. We're going to get down here to the description. And because we already um, highlighted up above and copied, we can paste the same description here. And you can make any one of these fields. I know it can't be, I know it can't be blank. I want to see more. There we go. Um, there we go. The general ledger account number, we enter that. and enter the amount. Then we're done with this particular entry. We're going to click Add. And we have a third entry on this uh, deposit. And it is a miscellaneous receipt. It is not something that we invoiced for. So we're going to type in our identifier number, cash receipt 13. 2040, and we're going to change this to miscellaneous receipt. And the receipt date is 10 4, the posting date is 10 11, and the month of October. There is no customer number, but the payor is AAA, and the reference number is the AAA and they rented a room, so it's room rental. They paid by check, and their check number is 946049. We're going to bypass the invoice number. The amount we received from them was $60. We're going to go in and type in a description because this is what's going to pull over into your general ledger. And that account number is 487006051801. And the amount is $60. Click Add. So now we entered all three entries and my receipt from the bank states that they received twelve thousand five twenty two ninety and we can see that the system agrees and it added uh, all three entries together and it came up with twelve thousand five two two point nine zero which matches so what we do here is we can close the batch and then I always recommend that 
um, you preview the batch before you actually post it. And you can do it two ways. You can go out and click back in and you know review each line here, or you can select print tab and you can look at a print preview of what you've entered. So there's the first entry. So here's entry number one. This is uh, the reference number for this batch. This is the automated number that's generated by ACPAC. This is the receipt amount that should match the check. The year period, so we want it in October. Uh, the posting date should be, we made a mistake, should be today's date, the 11th. The receipt date is the 4th. And here's the account receivable and the invoice. We go down to the next one. And same reference date, automated payment amount, the receipt amount, the period we want hit is October. The posting date, we made an error here, so it needs to be corrected. The receipt date is 10 4. Um, this is an automated invoice number. And there's the description for the workshop and the amount. The third entry is down here, October. I did do the posting date correct here. Receipt date was 10 4. Uh, there was a room rental payment. And we are going to go up here to check the rest of it on page 2. There's the account number. The account number is correct. Rental income $60. Total receipts. And there's an invoice with 70, which is the 60 plus the 10. And the receipts. And advanced credit. So, in order to make a change, because we made an error, we open the batch by double clicking it and change the posting date to today's date for entry number one. Click save. Go to entry number two. And we want to change that to number 11, the date 11. And the invoice must be automatically assigned under a miscellaneous receipt. And, though, and then you click Save here. And then Close. And then you can re-review your deposit to make sure that you made the changes properly. There's October 11th. Here's October 11th, October 11th. And if you notice, when I clicked in that last screen, that this invoice number is generated um, by the system, as opposed to an invoice number that was generated through the cash receipt process when we did invoicing, which we will, we will go over in a separate video tutorial. Once that you know or feel comfortable that your uh, deposit is correct, you can close that window and you click post. And that will automatically post the batch to the accounts receivable module and send the batch to the general ledger. Some people have the general ledger set so it will automatically post. If not, you will need to go to your general ledger, go to gel transactions here, open your batch list, find the new batch that was set over, and print and post it. Thank you for your time.